tonight. Um, I, I, we'll get into why uh, the, the the physical uh, issues that he had um, here in, in segment two. But um, you know, I, I like to say you know I, I didn't think it was a bad raw or anything by any means. But anything that did happen <laughs> to the betterment in advertising of uh, WWE Fastlane really seemed like it was it was certainly eclipsed by by how we ended with the with the speech um, last night that went well into. Geez, it was almost about eleven thirty here. On the East Coast, by the time they were done, they really let it go uh, last night. I thought, um, which makes you think. Uh, I think I heard that someone timed it at thirty-five minutes. Thirty-five minutes. Wow. I, I don't know if they counted everything that happened on the network after. Right. Um, but that's a hell of a lot of time. That is. Um, so, uh, it, but anyways, he, he, he announced his retirement officially on Twitter, I guess, uh, earlier in the day. Got picked up by all the outlets. He's on SportsCenter tonight. I don't know if that's, that's happened as of, as of our recording this yet. Um, how did you guys feel out of that one? one how, how many were crying? Maybe by the end of that, a little bit of a tearjerker, of course. Yeah. We got some hands raised there all yeah. over the place. Um, so, uh, uh, Garza, what were your thoughts uh, going through that last night? Uh, you know, I, I actually wasn't as sad or mad as I thought I was going to be. As I started listening to his, uh, I guess, speech, uh, there, there was like this, uh, this feeling that, you know, it's something that we kind of saw coming, uh, as the months went on and on and on. And we finally, we finally know what's up and, it, it sucks. Uh, Daniel Bryan's a wrestler. He was probably the first guy that I, that I got behind when I first started watching Ring of Honor, and I've been following his career ever since. So he was like my guy in WWE. As soon as Punk left, I, I feel he was like the last stand against that corporate mentality. And so it is kind of heartbreaking that he's gone. But at the same time, uh, I'm kind of happy that as you say, he, he got to be the guy uh, to a certain extent, and it, it's just gratefulness. I, I mean, he, he was a champion, uh, he has a pretty lady, and he, he's <laughs> living the dream, you know? He's, he is, it's an American dream. He gets to live with his lady and eat granola <laughs> yeah. up, uh, up in Washington State. I mean, I mean, you can't beat that. Uh, John, yeah. what are your thoughts uh, 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 of Brian retiring last night as you were watching that? Uh, well, I did cry, so I got to say the tears were there, and, mm-hmm. and that's because uh, what wrestlers do is they connect with the fans in a way that uh, honestly is a very enigmatic. And even professional sports, I, I've been a fan of Pittsburgh sports for years. That's where I'm from, and uh, not an athlete retiring has never done that to me. I watched Shawn Michaels retire, Ric Flair, Edge, and he's my all-time favorite. You have to understand how you know sad I was for that. And now Daniel Bryan, uh, as fans, were kind of selfish because let's be honest, Bryan should have retired years ago. Uh, being in the industry for 16 years, multiple concussions. And he even said last night his first concussion was within five months of his debut, and he was only 18 years old. The times were different back then, and now with all the concussion uh, hoopla, if you will, uh, with the NFL and so on and so forth, he really should have been done a long ago. But that's what made Daniel Bryan so great. He wanted to stay for the fans. He even said it last night. And uh, Garza, you brought up a really good point uh, when Punk left and he kind of started the trend of indie wrestlers coming to the WWE and now NXT, and we saw how big that monster is right now. I saw a really interesting quote that I want to really uh, bring to everybody else here. Uh, CM Punk opened the door for indie wrestlers, but Daniel Bryan kept it permanently open. Can you guys agree with that? Yeah. I want that. Yeah, certainly. Certainly. Um, uh, Matt, uh, what, what were your thoughts uh, last night? I know I, I, I know the, 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 the wife of Carlin's uh, was uh, telling her how she was crying, at least in some of the messages or online that I, I was reading. Yeah, I think I was the only person who didn't cry, but it's not because I didn't I was it's not because I wasn't sad. Yeah. <laughs> it's yeah. because it's because I'm a heartless monster. Um, <laughs> well, well, the, news, and, uh, the, 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 the the local news business will do that to a person. I understand it. it, it that'll happen. Yeah, yeah it's yeah. true. Yeah. Um, I, I just, I, um, I tell you, the thing that keeps popping into my brain whenever I think about this, this epic 30 minute um, farewell speech that like people are calling, you know, one of the greatest moments in raw history, one of the greatest moments in wrestling history. I don't know if I'm ready to go there yet, but we'll give it a few uh, months or years before we decide that. But the thing that kept coming to my mind was I thought this guy couldn't cut a good promo whenever he came into <laughs> WWE. That was always the knock on him. And like the the big no 
talk on him was always like, he can't talk. And his farewell is a 35 minute talking segment that is universally praised as the greatest thing that ever happened. And, you know, that kind of speaks to like the evolution of Daniel Bryan. He it was obviously a brilliant wrestler technically in the ring, but what he did and how he transformed himself um, in those years before he won the, um, the world title at uh, WrestleMania 30 is phenomenal. And just like embracing the entertainment side of it. And I know that kind of makes the hardcore wrestling fans kind of sneer a little bit whenever you say that, but he was able to combine both worlds. He brought, you know, all sides together in peace and unity. He brought those casuals and those hardcores together and, I, you know, when will we ever see another guy that the entire crowd is universally behind like Daniel Bryan? That's the closest thing we've ever been to probably to Stone Cold that that we've been since Stone Cold. Stone Cold, everyone was behind Stone Cold. Bryan, everyone was behind Bryan. And will we have to wait another 15 years or longer for another guy like that? It's hard to say. And, and it was somebody that were – and there was somebody that, that everybody <laughs> – was that Ambrose we heard in the background? <laughs> Jen likes yeah. to think everyone's behind Ambrose, but the guys secretly are mad at him because all the women like him. Apparently, but that's a different topic for another day. Apparently, and he's and he's he's freaking people out on local news as you posted on the Facebook group today. Um, that was a very interesting promo, our our, our new spot. But um, um, hey, uh, from uh, uh, San Antonio, Texas, our our buddy, voice of Inspire Pro Wrestling, is actually on the line. He snuck in here under the wire. Um, I wanted to uh, touch base on you uh, as well. I mean, you're a guy. You had a, a really good write up, uh, Eamon Payton. That's who we were talking to. <laughs> Hi. Hi. I had to get on this conversation. I'm sorry. Right, right. Not a problem. But um, but you were you you got, you had a really good post earlier. Um, about having the opportunity to see him in a couple of, of, of instances. Um, uh, can you talk about that and kind of your thoughts as as uh, as uh, Brian was going out here? Well, definitely. I think, I mean, also, well, one, being there for WrestleMania 30, which is based off of everything that happened last night, is a real, like, wow, I was there kind of feeling, like being there for that huge of a moment. Um, but also, uh, I think I've told this story before on the show, but... Uh, Myself and uh, Sorgatron here and some of the other Mayhem crew guys uh, went up to Cleveland for a Chikara Pro show. Uh, we had been planning on going for weeks, and uh, uh, it was announced like maybe I think the week before that uh, a recently fired WWE superstar, Daniel Bryan, was uh, going to be making some appearances, which is something I never thought I'd be able to do, which is seeing Daniel Bryan wrestle uh, being, you know, in that kind of environment, I should say. Uh, since you know being from the state of Texas, it never really kind of came out, came around to those kind of parts. But um, I think he really has transcended um, what it means to be successful in professional wrestling. I just the thing that I really took so much from last night was some of the cuts to the crowd and, and like children crying that that you know he had to retire. It wasn't just you know these. 20 somethings to, you know, follow him in Ring of Honor and, and, you know, all this other stuff he did on the independence. This is a guy that really was important to a lot of people. Um, and, and I agree completely in the fact that he definitely did, uh, as that quote mentioned, like keep the doors open for independent wrestling talent to come to WWE. Sami Zayn, I think, tweeted saying, if it wasn't for Daniel Bryan, the people that have been signed as of lately to NXT would have never gotten signed. Um, and I completely agree with that. He has changed the game when it comes to what you need to be a successful pro wrestler. Certainly. Uh, and for me, it, it, se- it feels like, you know, it seems like he's been taken away from us way too soon. Right. You know, even though he does have a great, you know, 16 year career, um, he, he does have a lot of, you know, it, it, not just the WWE. Obviously, there there's plenty you can see on the network of him, but there's also plenty you can go in the back catalogs of Ring of Honor or other promotions that are certainly have already capitalized and have best best of editions out there, um, like we've seen in the past with CM Punk and other guys that have gotten to this level. Um, but we also, you know, you mentioned the Stone Cold aspect that that genuine that genuine authentic organic thing that happened with him and that story over that he's he's going to be not just the crowd but he's the one that hijacked raw or via the crowd of course um to to get something on this i I mean you you wonder if he he really expected in the world wwe to get anything above an intercontinental title at that point right um and obviously you you saw what happened there and how 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 that happened 
Um, it, it is really an interesting story that I think we're going to be talking about for a while, just like we do the Attitude Era. Um, kind of that anomaly in wrestling. And uh, and I love that, 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 that it is Seattle and Platt is back all over these videos and pictures that I'm seeing um, <laughs> around the internet today uh, of him. And I think it's, it's really cool to see. Uh, so, uh, you know, a lot of memories, a lot of really cool stuff. Um, um, and I think we're going to be talking about him from weeks to come. Um, as, as, um, what, what, see what's next for him. You know, I'm kind of curious to see what, what happens. Is he a guy that comes that back like a Booker T and all these other guys as a pundit in some, in some, for, some fashion, or, or is he going to have some kind of his version of whatever the, the, the Shawn Michaels hunting show is going to be for Daniel Bryan, right? Uh, oh man. <laughs> could you imagine? Um, yeah. I, I was just going to jump in real quick. So you guys mentioned a couple times about the first time you saw Daniel Bryan. And uh, as I've stated on this show, and I can't believe I admit this more than once, but I'm going to again, um, that I was extremely late to the Ring of Honor train. So when Daniel Bryan showed up in WWE on NXT, that was literally the first time I'd ever seen him in the flesh wrestling. I knew him only by reputation. Um, And then he has a match that I'm sure a lot of you guys remember on NXT against Chris Jericho, who's world champion at the time. And it's an amazing match. And after the match is over, it's obvious to me. And I'm convinced in one match, oh, this is this guy is awesome. Everybody was right. And from there, you're just you're on your way. Um, I just thought that was interesting that he could come with that much that big of a reputation sight on scene for someone like me. And then to win me over in one match, basically, um, just kind of shows how good he is was. All right. <laughs> Riz is bringing up in the chat room, of course. Uh, he says, him hugging Connors nearly made him ball at the Connors' house uh, watching WrestleMania. Uh, more so than Punk and Austin, he had the audience in the palm of his hands, literally. And, and that's the thing. The, 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 whole kids, the whole kids aspect, like, you know, the, the, the Connors story, of course, everybody knows. But uh, it, being that underdog, he really kind of epitomized that. Being the small guy, right? Uh, being kind of the awkward guy. Being not the John Cena's of the world. And, and I think it's really interesting. And, and again, like I said, give more of these guys a chance. You know, without this, we might not see, you know, the John Cena Invitational that has so many guys uh, have the opportunity to to step up over this last year. So (laughs) I I, I hope I hope that it is a not an active WWE or anything in this, but that Daniel Bryan, I think, out of anybody in the last, you know, five or even 10 years has been the one guy that the audience has vocalized their um, connection towards and how they should capitalize on that more, you know, how that, how they should sort of go in on, you know, and, and take those reactions and, and use that to fuel what, what you do going forward. Cause I, I, I think it's amazing everything for Daniel Bryan said, but we still got to look at it in the sense of, you know, every, everything does say that, you know, Daniel Bryan was not supposed to win the WWE title at WrestleMania 30. No. You know, when it came to plans. Uh, it was forced, basically. It, it had to happen. Um, and, you know, I think it's those genuine connections that people develop for certain wrestlers that can help grow business. And and hopefully, I think WWE will capitalize on that more going forward. Certainly. I mean, I, go ahead. I, I sometimes wonder if deep down and if Vince McMahon secretly regrets having going back on his plans for WrestleMania 30 and crowning Daniel Bryan at WrestleMania 30, because it feels like creatively, at least in a fan reaction kind of way, um, that WWE has been paying the price for uh, surrendering to the uh, public onslaught of goodwill towards Daniel Bryan for the past couple of years. They paid the price for it. They've definitely paid the price for it um, with the attempts to get the Roman Reigns where they want him to be. And I think it, and I think part of Daniel Bryan's uh, legacy is that it emboldened the audience to truly believe that if we want something bad enough, we can get it. If we hate something bad enough, we can make it not happen. If we cheer Daniel Bryan long enough, he'll be champion. If we boo Batista and Randy Orton long enough and John Cena, eventually they'll give us our guy. And, and you know, and, but and at the end of the day, that's not necessarily how wrestling is supposed to work. 
Um, that's not, Hey, I'm not complaining, but I, I, I think it's, it, it's not how it's supposed to work in a sense that what we've seen in those cases, because it was taken to such an extreme, but it was taken to that extreme in a sense, because in, in theory, in, when running a, a particularly a wrestling business, the reactions of your audience and how your audience is gauging your talents and how they're uh, accepting or not accepting them should be how you feel your product going forward. I feel uh, yeah. you should yeah, go ahead. Sorry. Well, no, I, I think that's a really excellent point that I just think there's a big difference between not liking somebody like a Roman Reigns or a Batista because it's cool or not liking him just to not like what's going on. I feel like the biggest uh, difference is that the creative aspect for Roman Reigns, this isn't uh, well logical at all, and they're forcing him down our throats. And I hate to use that term because I feel like a mark when I use that term, but it, it's very true. Vince wants him there. Well, now it's Braun Strowman. Vince wants Braun Strowman on top. Uh, who's going to be next? It's not someone that the fans pick. If the fans can watch a good heel work, uh, like The Rock, or you know, even go back to the NWO. Yeah, they were cool to not like them, but at least the storylines made sense, and there were heroes that were built up. Right now, let's fast forward a year here. What big star has been be, has been created right now with Seth Rollins? Anybody else under under the age well, of thirty four? The injuries, the injuries have a lot to do true, with that. True, true. The injuries have had a lot to do with that. But, um, but, but it does speak to to the void that's left when Daniel Bryan tries to re- goes up. when Daniel Bryan with Daniel Bryan gone. There is a massive void, not just in WWE, but you know, in professional wrestling largely. The best technical wrestler, bar none, for what a decade more, is gone. Mm-hmm. So who's that guy now? You know, well, I, and 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 stay with me here when I say this because I know this will sound crazy. But I watched a recent Vince Russo shoot interview preview, and he he was talking about him booking in '98, and uh, particularly with Austin and how he had grown in popularity and. And the company put more on his back in a sense. And he basically said that that was based off of the fact that each week they were listening directly to what the audience was saying and reacting to. And the next week of television was based off of those reactions. And, you know, that's kind of a good way to do things. Like WWE doesn't really do that. They, you know, kind of stick to a plan and say, okay, we'll do, you know, we're going to do something or we'll do a month or two months of something to get somebody to get to this point where the crowd would like them instead of listening to the audience and, I think, and going based. I think it has to be a, kind of like a, a 50-50 way you work it. A, a good booker is he who can, he or she, I guess, who can identify what the fans want. But at the same time, uh, they should be able to book a wrestler and make the, the fans believe they want him. <laughs> You know, they need, a booker needs to know how to how to sell your, your your product so that the fans like want it, regardless if if they affect if it's good or not. So, uh, I think uh, I think that's where where W is failing right now because uh, they fail. I mean, they have like for instance Brian and Reigns, and and they fail to just try to fix both of them together at the same time. So they the fans. Think they're getting what they want, but at the same time, we're pushing a lot we want. Mm-hmm. If that makes sense. Yeah, and, 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 and again, not to make this into like a conversation like how WWE creative is or whatever. I just mean in the sense of like Daniel Bryan did have an amazing career, but he also could have had more. Mm-hmm. I, I feel, I you know, even with you know the injuries that he accrued, he could have had more. He could have been the face of the company. And also, I mean, I think we've been this before because I kind of feel the same way about Stone Cold Steve Austin. I think he was kind of taken in the prime of his career, well, maybe past the peak, but still, he's a guy that could have stuck around. I mean, could you imagine the, you know, Jericho comes back and makes, you know, a certain amount of impact. The Rock comes back and makes a certain amount of impact. Do you, could you imagine if the if Stone Cold could have come back every two or three years and made some kind of impact, you know, just to mix it up a little bit? Because, I mean, he was the peak guy. Right, he's yeah. bigger than Hogan in his era, right? And, and and how many people that brings back versus you know who I, I don't want to say who are settling on, but uh, but you know the possibilities of something like that could have been really really interesting. I I'd love to see 
Stone Cold and Punk, that will now never happen. I'd love to see Stone Cold and Daniel Bryan, you know, and, and uh, you know, down the line, the Stone Cold John Cena, I don't think ever happened, for instance, right? That would be incredible to see those two eras come together. Um, but you never know. But, but uh, another point that a lot of people have been making that kind of goes with that is like, how many matches now are we never going to get the chance to see in WWE? Mm-hmm. We're never going to get to see Daniel Bryan, Kevin Owens. We're never going to get to see Daniel Bryan, Sami Zayn. Right. Or, you know, AJ Styles or, you know, numerous other guys. Right. Nakamura. Nakamura. Oh, jeez. 